Hey, I'm Anthony Wyatt down here at Rings of Dreams, and I am psyched for some fights, let me tell you. I'm wanting to see some punches to the face, some kicks to the legs, since these are amateur rules. We only got one pro fight, and I am crunk. See you there. Bradley, the Rainbow Essex, and we're going to do you a quick recap here of the fights tonight at uh, Rings of Dreams. Now we started out the night with a, with a huge uh, with a huge fight. Guys came out uh, throwing some big bombs in the first couple rounds. You know, uh, how important do you think it was when the when the fight actually went to the ground? Um, I think with all them throwing big blows, we actually saw whose cardio was up to par. I mean, when you're throwing blows like that, you're exhausting all the energy you possibly have. And if you notice later in the other rounds that their strikes weren't as crisp, they look like more slapping than punching. But uh, once you get to the ground, you got to be prepared for that as well. Yeah, but it was a great back and forth battle of the heart, really, because both guys were catching each other. Both guys got clipped, got dropped, shot in for takedowns. And all in all, I think it was a great fight. How about you? Um, I definitely have to agree with that. I mean, it, they went out there and they put on a show for everyone out here. Um, first fight of the night, you got to start it off right, and I think they did. I'm here with Dylan Mason, who has just picked up a big win here tonight. How's it feel to come out right out the gate, no fights before, and uh, explode on him in the third round with a big submission like that? Best feeling I've ever had in my life. Honestly, now, you came out, you were both throwing some bombs. It seemed as though you were landing the harder punches. Uh, I mean, was it hurting you when you were getting hit? Uh, I mean, my thumb kind of hurts a little bit from hitting him, but my face feels perfect. A lot of shots, a lot of groundwork. Both of you guys put on a really exciting fight. Did you had to actually come out and take it down to the ground, or were you trying to put him away on the feet? I heard that he uh, he, he, he went to a Muay Thai school for a couple months, and he had no ground game, so why not take him down? I wrestled in middle school a little bit in high school. I'm just a better wrestler than I am stand-up. Definitely, and it really paid off here for you tonight, man. Congratulations, big win. No problem. All right, and then we moved on to the second fight, which was Aaron Shul versus Bobby Oakley. Now, the first round, Aaron really dominated with his wrestling and his top control. I mean, do you feel like like his takedowns were like a real factor for him in the first round? Um, for the first round, if you want to score it, I would have scored it for Aaron. Um, his takedowns were a huge factor. But again, that's all he was trying to do. He wasn't really setting his shots up. But he was able to come in, get the takedown, and finish it, and finish strong, and land in a great position, and dominate that first round. Now, position-wise, if it, how do you feel about a guy that can take somebody down and lay on top of them, but he's not really doing anything offensive, not moving position, not striking or anything like that? How, how how do you feel about the you know the referee trying to stand something up like that? If, if it feels more like a stall. Um, definitely, I agree with that. I think referees should stand to fight up if you're laying there and you're not transitioning, looking for a submission, not striking. The object is once you get on the ground, you're still looking to finish that fight. People look to finish on their feet, you need to look to finish on the ground as well. That, I feel the exact same way. But you know, Aaron came out and he was, uh, he was showing some great ground control and everything. He looked like he really did not want to contend with the reach of Bobby. But the second round, Bobby managed to uh, stuff his take down. And that, that looked like that took the heart right out of him because he comes running across with his head down and he, and he got clipped. That's a beautiful shot, huh? Uh, actually, yeah, exactly like you said. He came in with his head down, arms out, and uh, got clipped with a left and a right that dropped him. And he followed up and finished with that TKO victory. And that was a big win for him, his first actually, um, against a much skilled, much more experienced than a uh, big ground guy in uh, Aaron Shul. All right, I'm here with Bobby Oakley, who's just picked up a huge win by TKO. You know, he really took you down a lot and kind of dominated you the first round. How important was it for you to come out and sprawl out on his next shot in the second round? Uh, the whole game play, I knew he was going to sprawl on I mean, I knew he was going to come in on me because all his fights are by submission and I just, if he took me to the ground, I was going to try to either stand back up or take it how it comes. Well, you sprawled out big time. Was his shot any weaker and a little bit easier to deter than the first ones? Yeah, uh, no. they, they were all about the same. Just adrenaline? You know? Yeah. <laughs> all right. I really don't remember too much. Uh, <laughs> I don't even really remember connecting with the hit, but I remember him, it kept coming down, coming in low, so I was like, well, I ain't going to be able to jab him, so I uppercut him and 
it worked out for me. How happy were you when you connected with that, you push him off, it was a beautiful move, a beautiful sprawl, you push him off, you get out, he comes back in with the head down, you clip him with the uppercut, you see him fall to his knees, how happy were you at that moment? It won't happen, it was like, did I really just do that? <laughs> you know, it's only my second fight, but it, it ain't gonna do nothing to get better. Well, you looked really impressive tonight. It looked like it was, uh, looked like it was a lot of fun for you to finish yeah, him off like yeah. that and get your first big win by a TKO. Anyway, that was a great job and a great display of punch and power. Look forward to seeing you again. The third fight of the night, we had uh, Kevin Crowder versus Justin Potts. Justin Potts has so much experience, and his record doesn't look that great, but he is a great fighter. Yeah, definitely. Justin Potts, his record may not show his actual ability and talent. Um, I've seen him fight more than once, enjoy him fighting. He brings it to fight. Um, he keeps on his feet. It's a fight in his favor. The thing is, he's got to work on that takedown defense. And uh, well, once he works on that, I guess that's solidified. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with. I totally agree. It, it, it looked uh, like his opponent really came out here to set the pace with his wrestling. Uh, great takedowns, a huge slam in that first round. It, it made me kind of hurt. But uh, he, he came out with some good ground and pound and some great positions and managed to run away with the decision there. Do you really do you feel kind of like Justin should have threw less kicks and less knees on his opponent who he knew was trying to take him down? Well, I mean, I can't say anything for his game plan, but if you did notice, when he would throw a kick, he was countered with a takedown. Exactly. His kicks landed hard and effective, but when you throw a kick, you leave yourself over that takedown. When you fight a wrestler like that, you get taken down, and that's exactly what happened. The guy did have great ground control. I felt he stalled it out a little bit, but hey, that's what happens when you fight a wrestler. I totally agree, but that was a great fight. Hey, I'm here with uh, Kenneth Crowder, who just picked up a huge win by decision. How does it feel to come in here and get your first big win, man? It feels real good. Without my fight team, my friends, family, it wouldn't be possible. So, without my uh, teammates on my fight team, I wouldn't be able to train hard. I gotta have people in the same room with me that go with the same intensity. So, when you got somebody in there that go with the same intensity as you, it'll make you better. So, it wouldn't be possible without my fight team. It definitely looked like you knew he was more of a striker and a kickboxer coming in here. What, with a lengthy reach on a guy like that, what's the idea to get him down to the ground as soon as possible? Um, not really, because I watched a couple videos on him. I knew he really, he, he really couldn't take my stand up. So that first period, I tried to hurt him and think, to make him think that I was coming down with the uh, stand up game. But then once he thought I was coming with the stand up game, I just went on and took it to the mat. You know, I actually saw you pick him up over your head like three different times. How much energy does it take to slam a guy like that? It takes quite a bit of energy, but as long as you are putting in a good cardio, you can do it. So is the uh, is this going to be your uh, victory dance now? A little? Uh, nah. Nah, I'm not really a showboat person. I just All like right. to get the win and get out of there. All right, man. Well, you look great tonight. Great display of wrestling, man. All right, thanks. All right, and then the next fight on the card was a real exciting. We got pretty pumped up about this because he really he pulled out like a crazy old school wrestling move. He picks the guy up and literally throws him over his head. Yeah. But not only does he do it in the first round, he does it again in the second round. I mean, how I know you were pumped. I was pumped. How excited were you? Have you ever seen anything like that before in a fight? First off, uh, the human catapult is what I like to call him. No, I haven't actually seen that ever in a fight. Um, it reminds me of those Mortal Kombat moves when you throw the guys and then you uh, scorpion come over here, slam them back slam down. down. I mean, he literally lifted this kid, sent him flying. He joined NASA for a second and he brought him back to the earth. I mean, it was amazing that the guy even took the slam like he did and, and kept fighting and just kept going and still had gas to keep going. I mean, I saw that slam and I... Yeah, I jumped out of my seat. I, we both did. We kind of collided heads for a minute. But there, there was also a point in the second round when he decided to do it again. Not as much air, but still pretty impressive after he pretty much threw him up against the roof the first time. Uh, that is true, but not taking anything away from the fight. The guy that he fought um, that was doing the slamming is a superior wrestler. I believe he was a two-time Division One All-American from Central Michigan. So the guy came with a great wrestling pedigree, and he showed it off today. And that's how he ended up getting that three-round decision um, from all three judges. Is he used superior wrestling and kept the guy on his back. Yeah, it did appear, though, in the later rounds, it, it, some of those slams and a lot of the uh, top top control, yeah, it seemed to be like gassing him out a little bit. I, I, I was actually kind of worried that he might have got clipped in that last round because the, the guy knew he was up behind the cards, and he came to throw some bombs, and he did not want to lose that fight, but he, he did come out a little short. Uh, that, that's true. I mean, I did. He did look like he was a little gas. I mean, picking up a man of that size is tiresome. And when you do it twice like he did, I mean, it's, it's going to gas you out. But um, he pulled through and somehow kept the victory. I believe he got clipped as well. Maybe in the third round we could both be wrong, but uh, he fought through it and uh, got the win. Yeah, he, he was a real tough guy and just a real excellent 
display of uh, some superior grappling there. Jeff Mettler versus Jeff Johnson. Uh, do, do you want to take this one since you happen to be a, a, a training and sparring partner of uh, Jeff? Um, I mean, Jeff Jeff and Jeff, I guess, are both uh, they're really good friends, actually. Um, they've been talking before this fight, and they're really excited about this fight because they both are a little bit older than most MMA competitors. I don't know the exact age, but it's probably between them both over 70, closer to 80. Um, but but uh, like I said, Jeff, Jeff's been training hard for this fight, and he did exactly what he said. He, he was patient, came in, landed some bombs, and uh, knocked, knocked, knocked the dude out, which was his game plan, um, and that's exactly what he did. He hit him on the chin and put him down. Yeah, it was a great display of some serious power, too, but he came out. Now, you can give us the inside scoop because you, know, you were helping him train for this fight. He came out with his hands a little low. You know, he was really gauging distance and uh, trying to get the guy's timing down, and as soon as, like, he zeroed in and got it all down, he poured it on and he got that knockout. Was that what you guys trained? Um, I, I don't know if that's exactly what we trained with his hands down, but with the straight right and the jab, working the jab is definitely something we train because the jab, we could keep him off, keep uh, the other Jeff at a distance, and that's exactly what he did. The hands down was not something that we train because um, in MMA, it's not like boxing. They're little bitty gloves. Um, you put your hands down, you're not going to block anything. Even if you're blocking, you're still going to get caught. So that's something we didn't work on, but he did execute the game plan of jab, jab, and throw those rights, and they started connecting, and he just poured it on. Yeah, it really looked like, it, you know, it, the hands down is probably just, you know, a display of how relaxed and confident he was that he was going to take the fight, and he did with some superior striking. I am here with, well, I've been call, told to call you Old Man Jeff. Is that all right? Is that okay? I heard you're 43. Yeah, like old man. Hell no. Okay. Hell, and get, I'm not 43. Uh, no? Nah? I'm not 43. Why are people giving me misinformation? My, ba my bad. I'm 40. You fought like a 20-year-old. It doesn't matter. Anyway, you came out here tonight. What's the plan to really give it to him standing like that? Oh, absolutely. 100%. The whole time, I knew I was going to knock him out. My last fight, I got knocked out of the night. I, I knew I would get my hands in his face. That's why I just stayed on my feet. I kept my feet moving so he couldn't shoot on me. I pushed him away when he tried to take me down. And I caught him. Caught him with an uppercut, loosened him up, hit him with a big right, you know. They can't take that power, not with these MMA gloves. Definitely not. It, it looked like you were starting a little slow, trying to get this time and get the range down. Exactly. Is that what you were doing and then trying to wait for your opening? I was wanting to set him up, keep him on his feet, get him to come to me, which is exactly what I did. And then, you know, I just, I, I laid my hands on him. I mean, you know, so. He, he clearly didn't like that. When you saw him go down, were you, were you really antsy to chase him down or you just kind of knew it was over as soon well, as his knees buckled? He, he really, I knew he was hurt, but I knew he still had, like, if I wouldn't have got on top of him, he could have got up. Yeah, there's always so, a chance. Yeah, so um, um, I wanted to go ahead while I had him down in the fight. So. Well, Matt, that was a beautiful display of striking and a beautiful display of power. We look forward to seeing you again. And then lastly, we had a big pro fight here between uh, two guys that uh, had not had a win between them, but they came to win. We had Brian Mullis versus uh, Jeff Therrington, who seemed to have quite a following here tonight. Junkyard Jeff Therrington. Junkyard Jeff Therrington. Thanks for the correction. No you seem to enjoy that. But he, it looked like he came to wrestle and the other guy came to throw hands. I, you know, just, just, just help us out with a little bit of what happened between that. Oh yeah, definitely. You had your classic fight, uh, wrestler versus striker. Apparently the guy he fought had some pro boxing experience. This was his first pro MMA fight. If it had to be his first pro MMA fight or first MMA fight period, he'd had to be a professional in another sport. Um, he's also in the Army Reserve, so he came in shape, ready to fight. Jeff knew he needed to get it to the ground, and he did, and he kept him there, and they kept uh, great scrambles back and forth. Jeff was able to get on the back and secure that choke, and um, Got the tap and got his first win. I was very excited for that and here in Winston at that. That was a big slam that ignited the crowd out here. Everyone was excited. As soon as he as soon as the feet came off the ground, everyone was standing up cheering for Jeff. Now, he actually, uh, when we were talking earlier to him, he actually seemed a little angry that on the ground he was reversed or that the other guy had anything on the ground for him because he expected only only uh, striking from the other guy. Does that ever happen to you? Yeah, it can be very frustrating whenever you don't expect someone's ground game to be as good as it is or they're able to get a move on you and out-scramble you. It is frustrating, but he, he, he as a pro, he was able to stay calm, get back in a better position and finish the fight and finish with a victory. 
Maybe it may have been that frustration uh, on the ground that uh, ignited something inside of him to push through and get a huge submission win. His, his first, and it was a very exciting fight. And we look, we look forward to seeing more from him. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> I'm here with Jeff Derrick, who has just picked up a huge win by submission here. Was the idea to get the guy down to the ground? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That boy's a professional boxer. I didn't want to on, on, on his feet, man. He'd have, he'd have beat me up, so. He, uh, he's, probably, he's probably in a lot better shape. Just got out of the Army six months ago. Uh, yeah, get him on the ground, choke him out was what I told everybody I was going to do. That's about my only way to win that fight. So, Well, you look great doing it. That was a big slam. It got the, a lot of the crowd was behind you. Was that part of your fuel and your fire tonight? I mean, you got it. Yeah. Yeah, you gotta slam that guy right there. I didn't come out here and slam him easy, so that's the point, man. Put him on his ass hard and then finish it. And that's finally what happened. It took a while longer than I was hoping, but it worked out. So, yeah. Well, you look great doing that. An excellent display of wrestling out there. Appreciate it, Is there anything you would have liked to do different? I wouldn't have wanted him to reverse me ever. I got, I got a little tired, my hips got weak, and just, I just didn't have enough grit to get through some of the stuff he did to me, but at the end of the day, I was a little better on my ground than he was, and it worked out, so. So you're almost insulted that he pulled off anything on the ground while he's a boxer and you're the ground guy. Now, if he, if he knocks my teeth out, that's one thing, but taking me down is, is unacceptable. Yeah, it's pathetic. But you know, hats off to him, he, he fought harder as I did, but he just come up short. So. Well, hey, man, that was a real impressive win. Congratulations yeah, on a big victory. It's a great night of fights here. Uh, I'm Anthony Wyatt, no nickname, anti-nickname. I'm anti-nickname Anthony, here with the rainbow. No one thing. And uh, it was fun, Brad. Yep, um, last thing here, I love, I'm, I love you too. I'm looking to come back and fight again. Um, I was disappointed from my last fight. Kevin Front was able uh, to submit me. Great opponent. Uh, yeah. Really glad I got to fight him. But I'm looking to come back March, maybe March 19th, if Marcelo is looking at this. Um, you see my face. I'm still pretty. And uh, I want to keep it that way. So um, say what's up. Stay breezy. I don't know. You really did fight Rainbow a tough fought a, You fought a tough guy. You really did. Just throwing that. Ah! Okay. All right. All right. Tur turn it off. He's